Hey guys, welcome back to Scum's Garage. Uh, today's video, I'm gonna show you how to bleed or burp the cooling system. Now, if you've replaced the radiator, or even pull it apart, or even have to open the cooling system for whatever reason, then this video is just for you. Now, in one of my recent video, I replaced the AC compressor on my IS300 here. And in order to do so, I had to pull the radiator out. And today, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to bleed the system. Also, I also wanna show you this uh, spill-free spill -free funnel that I got from Amazon. It's really nice. Comes with all different kinds of attachment for different kind of radiators. Just find the right attachment, put it on, and make sure it's nice and secure. Put your funnel on top, push it down. Now, before you start pouring your coolant in, most cars have a bleeder valve. Uh, for the IS300, there is no bleeder valve. But if there are, there is a bleeder valve, you want to go ahead and crack that open. Once you crack it open, then you start pouring your coolant in. You pour until the coolant comes out of the bleeder valve, and then you close the bleeder valve. As you can see here, I got my, my coolant filled up. Probably, I say, not even halfway, probably like an eighth of a way up. But um, if you pour and it can't pour anymore, you can squeeze this hose to help draw out the air bubbles and to suck it in also. And what you can do is go ahead and turn the car on and it should help suck some of this coolant back in also. Also, don't forget to top off your reservoir. There is a line that you fill it up to. You don't have to fill it all the way to the top. It, it also helps to have your car jack on jack stands, especially the, just the front end of it. Uh, if you don't have jack stand, you can drive on a hill, on an incline of some, of some sort of uh, hill. And uh, the reason for that is because, you know, a bubble likes to travel to the highest point. But if you don't have a hill or jack stand, then, you know, where it sits is fine, too. Okay, so now what you want to do is get in your car and put the heater on the highest settings and make sure the fan is completely off. Now, I've just started the engine and we're just, uh, we're just going to wait until the thermostat opens. And when it does open, it will start sucking all this coolant down some more. And uh, we'll have to check on the temperature gauge after. It does help to squeeze this radiator hose to help alleviate some of the bubbles. Now, one thing that can speed up the process is if you go in the car and idle the car at 2500 RPM, that'll make this process go a lot quicker. So we're just waiting on the fan to kick in which could be anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes. After a few minutes or so, you can see where bubbles are starting to pop up. You see there, the, the fan kicked on. Let's go ahead and check our temperature gauge real quick. As you can see, it's right in the middle and it's been like that for quite some time now. It's actually been about 21 minutes. There was a few bubbles there, but other than that, I think we're pretty good. Let's go check that temperature gauge one more time. And we're still good. So I'm also gonna check my heater. Make sure it is hot. Let's see, turn the AC off. Oh yeah, it's hot, it's nice and hot. And the temperature gauge is still normal. We are good to go. So this funnel came with a nice little piece here where you put it right in the center push as far down as you can 
it'll block the coolant from leaking when you lift it up. It's very hot, so be careful. The extra coolant, I put it back in its own container. It's actually still pretty good, so I'm gonna keep it for next time I need it. And if you find this video useful, go ahead and smash that like button for me and subscribe for more contents. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.